All right. I think we're getting started here. We're going to be talking about the power of gratitude. Um, gratitude is such an interesting word <clears throat> because when you think about what you're grateful for, um, great sounds great. <laughs> you know, when I think about the word grateful or gratitude, um, I always think of it's got to be like some big thing. Like I am great or it's great that I went to Disney or it's great that I have a great job or I have a great job or I have a great amount of money or I have a great amount of success or I have a great family, right? And so when we think about gratitude, I think we use that E-A-T, G-R-E-A-T versus grat, uh, gratitude, uh, which is G-R-A-T. And it's a bit of a different spelling. Um, and I, I just, you know, to show you guys what the actual meaning is, it's the quality, it's a noun, it's the quality of being thankful, a readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. So like, what does it look like to be um, thankful and have a, a readiness to show appreciation? I think that's one of the key things when I think about gratitude and where we're going with this, because this is such a fundamental piece of my life that I want to always get better at. I start my mornings with gratitude, um, you know, and prayer, and and I thank God for the life I have, and and the family I have, the house I have, the cars I have, you know, all the 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 external things, but also the internal things and the inner peace I have, and 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 how I live my life. And every time I shift from a place of anxiety to gratitude, it it literally depletes all of that energy, the negative energy. There's so many times you wake up and you feel that anxiousness, you feel that anxiety, you feel the negative emotions and gratitude is powerful it allows you to literally go out from your day and and disperse or to get rid of that gratitude i know there's a couple guys getting on right now and i don't know if anybody is um has the ability to communicate but i'd love to hear from some of you guys and i'd love to even kind of open it up uh, to maybe a little bit of coaching around this idea of gratitude um, and what it looks like for you um, anybody on that uh, would love to get some coaching around this area of gratitude? All you got to do is just unmute yourself or stick a finger up or something. Yeah. Hey, Mark, I'll, I'll jump in. Yeah. This is Jeff. Um, I think I could be better with gratitude because I'm not living up to my own expectations. You know, I got to be thankful for what I have. You know, I actually have a great life, but it's not living up to my expectations. I need to be thankful for what I have. Is that kind of the response that you're looking for? Yeah. So, I mean, like when you say expectations, do you mean like personally? Do you mean like things are out of your control? Like what what expectations? Uh, More professionally. Um, and like, I don't know, a lot of the things that don't matter, like status and income, you know, cars, uh, the... Wait, the monetary you just said things they, that actually don't matter. They don't matter. You said they don't. Wait, matter. no, no, I, they do. I, this is my personal expectations, but I think I need to have more gratitude and stop chasing after this dream I had, and more. Hey, let's be thankful for what I have. I think that's kind of what I need more gratitude with, and by by accepting and being thankful for what I have, I think will free up a lot more mental space and capacity for be, me to be better in other areas. Mm. So you feel like right now, in, in a lot of ways, it sounds like your external issues, uh, meaning that like looking at status, money, success, cars, whatever, that sort of dream has got you in a place where because you're not meeting those expectations, you're constantly frustrated, angry, uh, not satisfied. Correct. Yeah. Overwhelmed, frustrated. Yeah. That, that would be spot on. Okay. And so what is it you ultimately want to feel when it comes to these things? Uh, hap well, you know, happy and, and successful. Okay. What does success mean to you? Uh, well, that would be living up to my expectations. You know, I guess I hate to say it, but like, you know, keep it up with the Joneses type scenario. I've, you know, I have a lot of successful friends around me and, you know, I'm currently between jobs now and I just, I'm holding myself back of, you know, reaching my own goals. So basically you you look at the people around you and you go, well, shit, I'm not living close to that level of success as they are. And so therefore you're comparing yourself to them and that's making you feel what? Uh, 
shitty, ashamed, you know, not it just it just I, I'm not living up to my expectations. Me, I'm just being hard on myself, uh, yeah. which in turn kind of makes me hard to my family. Uh, yeah. You know, once I'm in a, a, a pissy mood uh, and kind of that that energy roar gets sent off to others in my family. OK. And so what have you tried to lessen this? What have you tried to change that? Uh, well, I, I, tr I began and stopped. I had the, the Sunrise Manifesto, which is a daily gratitude book. Uh, I'm getting ready to start another 30 day gratitude challenge. But I, I've, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm just now. That's what I'm, I'm interested in this in, in your in our meeting today about being gratitude. Because when you take a step back, you know, life is actually pretty decent for me. Um, but uh, it's uh, that's what I'm trying to be more appreciative. I have and be more positive, uh, you know, even around the family and, and things like that. So I haven't done much to answer your question, but I, I'm trying to start some new things so I can make some changes. OK, so what is it you feel like needs to change for you? Like what what do you feel like ultimately needs to be different about you and the way you're showing up? Uh, well, I, I think the, the ultimate thing I need to do is if once I get a job, I think a lot of the things will change around me. Um, so that's kind of, I, I, that's kind of a burden at the same time. It's like, okay, I'm not dealing with my shit because all right, then my number one priority is to find a job. And so I kind of put everything back on the back burner. So that's the number one thing, but that's not being fair to myself and or nor my family. What do you mean not being fair to yourself? Well, because I'm just so hard on myself. I'm constantly like, uh, got shit to do. Didn't do that. Didn't do that. You know, I'm constantly, uh, just my, my brain constantly runs of shit I need to do and what I'm not getting done. And, you know, I'm kind of falling behind on, you know, career progression and, and success. Where did this whole career progression level of success come from? Where, where does, where does all this originate from for you? Um, I don't have a specific, I, I mean, I just knew, you know, growing up, you know, my parents argued it was always about money. And so I was always wanting to be financially secure. Uh, you know, it just, I've had some taste of money um, and, and success in my career. And then it's kind of gone away since then. But I was once on this uphill, uh, I, was, I was once on this one path of trajectory and then, I mean, full disclosure, I got a traumatic brain injury and my career has just fallen off a cliff. And, uh, you know, so I was on a taste of it and now I'm trying to get back on that hill and it's like, okay, maybe I'm not made for that hill. And that's why I'm trying to refocus and maybe have my gratitude to say, Hey, look, don't, don't chase that dream anymore. Maybe my life's on a, on a, on an alternate path now that I have to accept. So what I hear you saying is you're making meaning from the things that are happening to you versus challenging some of these assumptions. Right. I, I think uh, challenging some of these assumptions or my expectations is probably what I need to be doing uh, rather than me chasing, you know, a dream that I, I just always you know with a successful dream and, you know, people in my industry, things like that, kind of just keep it up with the Joneses type of thing with friends and such. What's your industry? Uh, I'm in healthcare sales, like digital health sales. Yeah. So basically you're, you know, you've got this persona that you're trying to build and, and live from, but ultimately it's not the real you. And because of that, it has you scrambling. And then obviously when you are living a fake life, you come home and you're frustrated with that fake life and you have no energy to give anybody because you're not living authentically. And it takes a lot to keep that fake life propped. Yeah. And I'm frustrated. Yeah. And that, that energy kind of, I don't know. Yeah. I, it's just, I could be a better uh, father and, and husband if uh you know i could i but that's what i'm like okay hey, if i get a job then everything will will fall in line but now i'm gonna realize okay maybe it's it goes a little bit deeper than than just that I mean, yeah, it's more. way deeper than that because because yeah. you just said yourself right even when you had the job and we're making the money that was almost like more of a crack addiction for you because you're like now that i've tasted you literally said i've tasted of money like that sounds like an, a fucking drug addict and, and you're like, I've tasted of it. And now, now I'm a fucking junkie and I need more of this shit. I need to find out when I get my next hit. And so, yeah, your kids have become like who? Your wife has become like who? Right. Uh, these, yeah. This is probably part of what led you to this place.
Yeah, it is. It is. You know, I'm chasing a dream I once had. Um, you know, I've had also issues with my wife. We were separated earlier this year. And I mean, basically, I'm at the lowest point of my life that I've ever been. I couldn't imagine my life ever being this low before. And I've I've hit it. So now I need to make some changes. And what are those changes you feel like you really need to make? <sighs> Gratitude. Appreciate what I have. Change okay. my mindset. Um, you know, maybe stop chasing a career that I once thought I had um, and look at some other lower level jobs. Uh, and just accepting who I am uh, and accepting the path, the career or accept the, the career direct. Uh, wow. The life trajectory that I'm now on versus the one that I was on. Does that mean you have to change careers to like something outside of health sales? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. And what would you do instead? Oh, I, I'm getting pressure from everybody telling me, you know, get something local, UPS, something just to get the, just to get some income of money. Um, I mean, I, I'm kind of more of an, an executive level, uh, uh, like a corporate sales, and look at it more, maybe more like an entry level job, something along those lines. It's just, it's. I know, because I spend so much time. I mean, it's a full time job looking for a job. Like, I can't wait to get a job so I can work less, as weird as that sounds. Yeah. But I'm working harder now than ever. And it's like, I, if I take a part time job doing something I don't really want to be doing, then it's like, how am I going to find the time to actually to to find a job that I that I actually want? Well, is it possible that you're sabotaging your efforts with that because you're you're chasing the wrong thing, and so? you know, it's got you in this limbo. So therefore anything you're going after, you're spending even more time, frenetic energy wasted on job opportunities that really aren't where you're supposed to be anyways. Yeah. I am wasting a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, I found that when, when you have frenetic energy like that, it's usually because you're trying to live from a false identity. And, and especially if you have this this old identity that was successful and that served you well for a period, what I'm hearing is that identity doesn't serve you anymore and it has to be dropped. Yeah. I think I need to refocus, uh, get different goals and realign with, you know, I guess the, the trajectory I'm on now. Yeah. And, and even when it comes to, you know, like every man in my five dimensional man thing, producer is one of those things. So you have you as a man, your internal world, your external world, you as a leader, you as a lover, you as a producer, you as a, a father, uh, and a lover. So, but man is the first one. You as a man, your internal and external world are the most important thing that you have going for you. And so if there's not an internal peace, if there's not an internal clarity, um, if you are not okay with yourself, all of that's going to be manifested in your producer life and your marriage and your, and your fathering, all of those things. And so it always starts back there. And I think what happens with guys like you is you go, well, I can't focus on that because I have to focus on producing. I have to focus on my wife. I have to focus on saving my marriage. I have to focus on this thing. And so you leave yourself behind because that's ultimately what was done to you in the beginning of your life anyways. Nobody cared for you. Nobody really loved you the way you needed to be loved. And so therefore you're not important. Everybody else is important. And you're going to show that and get love by loving everybody else because that's how you prove your value versus just accepting yourself for who you are. Yeah, it's spot on. Um, that yeah, that's uh, pretty spot on with my challenges. I'm just I'm lost, right? And you know, I I think you're. I need to take care of myself first. Uh, but right now, it's just I'm trying to see how focused. you just did that right there. You go. I need to take care of myself first. But when you put a right. button in, you're literally discounting everything you just said. Yeah, I I do that. It's everything. So. What's the uh, what's the quick fix of getting my ship right on the on the right path? <laughs> Dude, there's no quick fix, man. This is a journey, <laughs> a fucking process, right? This is why I've been showing up for five plus years, helped over three thousand men go through this. Like it's a fucking process. Um, the problem with guys like you is you don't have the process, you don't have a system, you don't have a template. You're just like willy nilly. You're trying this, trying that. You listen to this person, listen to that person. You're trying to like 
I did the same thing when I, when I was going through my separation divorce, I was trying to listen to this, listen to that, pull this in. And I was like, there's got to be a fucking better way. And, you know, I was able to come up with what I've come up with and it's been phenomenal. I mean, you guys missed it. This weekend was incredible. We had 20 dudes in a house in Scottsdale and there was so much healing, so much breakthrough, so much power, so much conviction. I mean, guys were, guys were sharing things from 20 years ago. They didn't even know that were things that kept their marriage where they were, meaning kept them in a bad place and were able to go with conviction and confess those things to their wife and let go of shit and make it uncomfortable. That's real man shit. And most guys are afraid of that level of accountability. They hide behind their mask. They hide behind their, it's going to be okay, or hide behind their children, hide behind their wife. And I think that's the real question for you is like, how much longer are you going to keep hiding, Jeff? I, uh, I, I'm at wit's end. I don't have a choice to, to come out from hiding. And that's why I was looking at, you know, the first step forward. That's why I was going to gratitude, but I'm yep. open to your recommendations. Yeah. I mean, as far as gratitude, it's just literally focusing on what, what are the things that I do have? What can I literally look at in front of me? And it starts with simple things. It doesn't have to be big things. This is why I started my conversation around gratitude, not being great. Um, because the power, the true power of gratitude, I think is in the simplicity of it. It's not in the magnitude of it. It gets magnified because of the simplicity. It's like any system for it to scale has to have simple energy in it. Meaning like, it has to be A plus B equals C. It has to be very simple. And you can't scale uh, a system that is over like functified with too, too much shit, too many moving parts. If there's too many moving parts in it, it's almost impossible to scale it. And in fact, when the when you build a system that has too many moving parts, the first thing you want to do is cut and prune, cut and prune, hold back, figure out what's working. And then you build, 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 cut, prune, cut, prune, cut, prune, build, build, build. It's the same way you do farming and, and trees and like growing trees and things like that fruit trees or whatever you have to prune to get to that place. So the way I look at gratitude is like the gratitude is focusing on what are those things? What are those basic essential things and starting there and then building up. So right. even just looking at what skill you do have, even looking at what network you do have, even looking at um, your home that you do have, the bed you have, the simple things like I can be grateful for this desk in this room with this window. I've got a window of my, you know, outside of my house and I can see my, you know, neighbor's yard. I can see the, the beautiful air. I see these birds that come around. I, you know, I can be grateful for those things, um, you know, that, that I have a safe environment that I'm not in, you know, out in the desert, you know, in Fe I live in Phoenix and I'm not out in the desert freezing my ass off right now. I've got a home. Um, I can, I can be accepting of those things and it starts there and it builds and builds and builds. So, so when I use it, I use the, you know, again, the five dimensional man approach that we teach and thrive and specifically going through, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for these things. You know, as a leader, I'm grateful for this as a, as a lover, I'm grateful for this. I'm thankful for this. Um, you know, and, and just being, being, I would say loose with my gratitude, meaning not holding back and then even sharing that with other people. Like, like my wife all the time. Um, and it was something simple she would do for me. Like we go to lunch, go to dinner, whatever. It's not a big deal, you know? Um, I'm the primary breadwinner, if you will. And we'll come back from a, a, a lunch at Chick-fil-A and she'll be like, thank you for lunch, honey. And it's just like, like at first I'd be like, why are you thanking me? Like this, you know, like it's of course I'm going to take you to lunch. Like why would I not? But her, her way of looking at the world was through this sense of gratitude of like, you don't have to do that. You don't have to take me to lunch. You don't, you know, but you chose to, and I appreciate that. So her willingness to show appreciation cultivates in our marriage a level of appreciation for each other where now I do those things for her, those little things, you know, like, you know, complimenting her or, or whatever that I might not have ever done before, but because I recognize, recognize what she does and what she brings to my life, I can bring gratitude to her. And so now obviously and that's a feedback loop, right? Where she's giving me gratitude, I'm giving it back, but vice versa. If we're looking at our kids, if we're looking at our job situation, if we're looking at other things, like I can be grateful for the fact that I have the ability to get on a phone today I can be grateful for the fact that I can punch up on the internet uh, resume thing. I can be grateful for the fact that I have a network and I have five other guys that are looking out for me. If a job comes down their desk, they're going to get back to me. I can be grateful for that. And saying it out loud is powerful. Like saying it out loud, like you can even hear it in my voice when I say those things. It starts to like churn an engine inside of me. And I think that's where it starts is our words are powerful. Our words create. Our words will destroy or create. And I'd rather you create with those words. Right. Like affirmations. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of 
stuff out. I don't, yeah, sure. All right. Uh, all right. Thanks for that quick tip. You're welcome. I, I mean, at the end of the day, man, I, I would challenge you to start looking outside of yourself to get inside of yourself, uh, meaning that you have to see what's outside of you to bring out what's inside of you. And some of that, you know, you, you go inward, you contract because you feel the pressure that you're feeling. And that contraction is not helping you expand. You have to shift from contraction to expansion. And expansion is only going to come when you change your environment, when you change the way you are seeing the world. And right now you isolated in a room isn't helping you do that. Um, I, I don't know where you're at with getting help or what, you know, I know you've searched out other challenges and things like that. And I don't even know, I don't remember you at all. I don't know if you've looked into, you know, working with us, but I would challenge you to, to go that route. And, and, and have a conversation with me and figure out, is this the thing for you? I know you come to these all the time. So it's like, what's next for you? Right. Right. Yeah. I am. a really, I've just, I get this gratitude book uh, and just 38 challenge. Something I found on, on uh, from a, um, a healthcare insurance company, but, uh, but yeah, that's all for your sources. So yeah, I'll have to look at that the producer side and gratitude. So I'll, I'll look into your uh, program too. It's, Obviously, I, I love what you've been hearing. I love what I've been hearing. That's why I dial in every week. Yeah. Here, I'll drop the uh the link to my calendar here. And uh you can got it. You can uh just book a call with me and wait, actually I'm putting in the wrong link. Uh, Archie, can you push that in there? Sorry, my my assistant will he'll do it. Um, but yeah, cool. let's just hop on a call, man, and just figure out what you really need. The end of the day, my goal isn't to make you do anything you don't want to do, but I think there's some what you're talking about is the things we do that I think you need to get pushed in. Um, because even with your marriage, even though it's like not perfect, but it's it's not where it needs to be either. And this is part of it, right? So um, there's the there's the link right there. All right, right. We're talking about the power of gratitude. I want to take on one other guy who wants to talk about gratitude um and what's coming up for you. So I don't know if uh, I see Brian, you've got your camera, Adam, you've got your camera. So either of you guys want to chat about gratitude real quick. Go ahead, Brian. I'm a little bit sick, so I sound like crap, but um all good. I'm yeah. same. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I got. So gratitude's been huge for me. You know, I've been uh been moved out of the house here over at dad's basement for a month and um when times get really tough, you know, I've been trying to get up every day and I, I kind of make a gratitude list. I have a lot of things to be gratitude, grateful for. Yeah. Um, despite whatever situations are going on. So, um, I mean, that's helped me get through. I've had a lot of resentment. I've had a lot of anger, I've had some other things. And once you really start to look in the gratitude, you, you start to see, um, I mean, this last year has been tough. I mean, I look back and see these situations that I thought were awful because they weren't the ideal situation, but then I see that the situations can become worse. And, uh, and then now I just wish I had that situation back, you know, at least I was in a better situation to progress. So, so being able to be in the moment and just kind of analyze the things that you are grateful for at that time, you know, that that'll put a smile on your face and, and relieve a lot of stress out of that. So, um, yeah. I mean, at first I was like, oh man, I can't leave them in my dad's basement. I can't leave this. I can't leave that. Yeah. My car's broke. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm really happy. I have my dad's basement. I yeah. come over here and pay rent and I don't have to stay in my camper. And then I'm also glad I got a camper. I'm like, holy cow. It was like, oh, I have to stay in this camper. But I'm like, oh wow, I have a camper. So it's just kind of, it's allowing me to fill my heart with more love, you know, like everything that I that I realize that I have, and especially the people, um, I'm just realizing how much I cherish them. And like my, you know, my wife, she's just ready to be done with me. And like, I, I just cherish her so much. And I'm grateful for all the times that we did have that were good. And, and you know, just even on the now separation, I thought that was terrible because it was just this constant thing. But I'm like, I'm still grateful that I had that because now I'm just over here lonely. So. I, I think gratitude is great because it puts you in the moment to see what you have. Um, so is there an area right now where you are not, you're struggling with gratitude? Uh, I, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of an overall struggling to maybe, maybe not gratitude, but remembering to be grateful 
because you know i'll just wake up and and my brain's just thinking about all that and all how i don't have her and she's not here and my life's all screwy right now but uh, I, I mean the way back is is gratitude so uh, i'm still grateful i get to talk to her on the phone now and text with her and i'm grateful i've got a lot of jobs coming in you know just just all that little stuff and uh you know it, it's it's big so, it, it's been it's been a hard little road yeah I mean, all that's good, you know, the 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 perspective of it. Um, I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah. Uh, anybody else want to share on gratitude or have questions about the power of gratitude and how you can implement that in your life? Uh, looks like, see, I don't know if Adam, if you got your camera on. Not sure if you want to chat or Phil, either of you guys. No? Okay, cool. Well, guys, um, you know, today was kind of a different than I normally do where I usually just like come out and just hit hard on, on a particular topic. And I really wanted to just, uh, John, are you getting on? Cause you wanted to chat about gratitude. Just saw you pop on with your camera. Yep. You're muted. I can't hear you. The last guy just made me, um, touch a nerve on he's living out of the house he's living in his parents basement whatever it is like i'm going through this live living in the house and it's just like torturous and i'm trying to be grateful for being here every day and i get the chance to have and see the winds with my family the times of happiness and joy and then the times of bad or whatever i guess i gotta deal with it you know, and that's, I'm grateful just to, it sucks that I can't even afford to live on my own right now, but I'm grateful for being here and going through this with them all and with my kids and stuff. And so, yeah, sure. I'm grateful. I have to be grateful for everything. Everything's a challenge. Every second's a challenge. So. Yeah. I, I think the hardest thing for a man to do in these situations, especially when it is this, you know, sort of contentious issue of in-house separation or getting separated or everybody's you know there's anger there's tension in the house i think the hardest thing is to really understand why this is happening and so the question is always why is this happening why am i experiencing this you know what did i do so wrong was i really that bad right those are the questions i think we all face in this scenario in this situation and i think it's really the that is not the question that we should be asking ourselves. Because if that's the question we're asking ourselves, we're asking it from a shame-based approach, what says that I, there must be something wrong with me to have caused this. There must be something wrong with me to be in a situation like I don't deserve love, apparently. And I think all, every time this happens to a guy, I just see it, it's like, it's these situations will reaffirm what you already believe about yourself. So if you already believe deep down that you're not lovable or you're not worthy of love, then your wife's rejection of you will just affirm that and will and you will make it all about you. And this is why when you go back to her, you say to her what you say, she always says, this isn't about you. Why are you making it about you? You're such a narcissist, all this shit. This is where yep. it comes from. This is exactly where it comes from. And you're valid to feel what you feel, right? There's no, you know, it's like, this is painful but we, shit. Man. But we caused it. There's certain, our, yeah, our there's certain aspects. There are things we caused her to feel how she feels and not being able no, to. No, I'm going to, I'm going to stop you right there. Okay. I, let me just bring some clarity because you're right and you're wrong. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with the premise of your argument or, you know, or, or, I know you're not arguing with me, but you, you hear what I'm saying. That's fine. I, I'm not arguing with that, but here's the thing is we can't take responsibility for what she feels. No, we can only take responsibility for what we have done and where we contribute to the failure of the marriage. We can't feel sorry for ourselves for causing that. Literally just went through this with a guy this weekend where he shared some things with his wife and it really just sort of threw off everything. With him. But he wanted to be real. He wanted to you know, say the stuff he said. And I was like, bro, you have no, you, you have nothing to do with her emotions and how she feels. You did not cause her to feel what you, what she feels. You, you might've done a thing that she didn't like, but how she responds is truly up to her. 
some right. people respond differently. They respond like, whoa, oh my gosh, I can't believe you told me that, but I appreciate you telling me that. And, and they could hear it for what it is. And, and over time, I think she will. Uh, the fact is, is women respect truth. So you're right in a, in a sense, right? The, the my, my woman looks at it as weakness. What's that? Looks at anything you say as weakness. You're not a man, you're this or that, you're weak, you know? When you say what, like, what do you mean? When I say my feelings, my emotions, whatever it yeah. is, you know? So it sounds like she's toxic and she doesn't know how to handle emotions. She's pretty toxic. Yeah. So this is why I'm saying it's not, it's not all your fault that you're in the situation you're in. What I look at is what is, what can you take responsibility for? My finances, <clears throat> myself. Okay. So taking responsibility for your finances looks like what? Getting more work, being stable. Okay. And what has caused you to not get more work and be stable? Advertising has gone up and down. Okay. So meaning that you aren't advertising or the, the power of the advertising isn't working? Oh, I mean, uh, in the industry, marketing, advertising. Okay. So marketing, advertising overall in the industry has had its ebbs and flows yeah. and you're feeling the effects of it. Okay. Yeah, big time. So why is that the cause? Like, how do you know 100% for sure that is the reason you're in the situation you're in financially? It's a big part of it. Yeah. Financially, I've been, she's had to like step it up and change roles. And she became more of a breadwinner at this point while you I know, figure out everything. What I, what I mean is, is, is how do you know that the root cause of the financial issue is the advertising? Oh, it's probably me, you know, me not being able to keep my finances stable and make better decisions on my finances to then say, okay, cut back this and that X, Y, Z. Yeah. So it's, it's the easiest thing is to blame the external situation. No, no, I'm not, but no, I, I'm, yeah, I'm past that. I, yeah. I have to take responsibility for finances and decisions made and, and everything else. Yes. And so then you feel that that has contributed to her lack of trust towards you. Oh, partially, yeah. Decision making. Yeah. Decision making a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, and it sounds like you agree with her. Uh, I do agree because I've just been like this having blinders on, not understanding things. I've been living in my emotion most of my life. Yeah. And now I'm finally getting out of them. It's been taking a while. So what is it you need to do next? I don't know. Continue working. I'm working on my emotions. I'm working on my finances. I don't know. Next is, I, I'm not even sure. Like it's, I'm moving out or I don't have the finances to move out. We need what, to get what industry are you in? Uh, marketing advertising. So your industry is marketing advertising? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. And so you have like an agency or what? Um, I do not. I work generally for agencies, but I'm thinking about doing my own digital agency to stay on my own so I don't have to fluctuate so much. What role do you play? Uh, creative director, copywriter. Okay. So creative director, copywriter, four agencies. And I'm assuming that you, like your pay is tied to the, the jobs that your company is bringing to you? Is it like a, like a 1099? Yeah, freelance mostly. Okay. So freelance, which means you're already on your own basically. So you're doing yeah. it through them and- so it's not necessarily you advertising yourself. It's more no, just no. the state not, of the industry. It's state of the industry down. in the last two years. So I've been trying to figure things out, startups, this and that, other things. Right. So you're really just from an internal man standpoint, you're just not absolutely clear on your vision for where you want to be in the next five to 10 years overall. Is that correct? That is correct. And I'm working on that right now and trying to figure that out if I'm good doing like a digital marketing agency where, you know, more taking on small clients and farming out work and doing all that on retainers. Okay. So or I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop an exercise here um, called the vision 360 and right. there's a link to it. I want you to watch the video there. And then there's a worksheet in it and it's all about your, the next three to six months for you. So financially, spiritually, emotionally, your wife, all those things. I want you to do that exercise. And I'm going to challenge you to email me um, with, with, with the actual exercise itself. Um, and I think we should talk about it. So he's, we're going to post it here below. Um, anyone, any of you guys can do it. Um, I think it'd be good for anybody if you haven't done this exercise before. Um, 
because really it's like you have to get clarity on where you want to be and then from there reverse engineer what those things are um right. and, it, and it sounds like if you can solidify on a financial standpoint because right now the power dynamic is switched completely um where, where she's got all the power right and so mm -hmm. That's like one of the first things I do with my guys that we call it diffuse the power she has over you. Um, and this, this is part of it, right. Is fixing the power dynamics in the home, fixing the power dynamics when it comes to the finances, all those things like you, you need a plan to do that shit. So I'm at least going to give you the worksheet. So you have that and you can, you can work on that. If you decide you want to talk, you've got my link up there. We can chat about it as well. Um, of how we help guys like you get out of the situation you're in, because it's really about how do I grow through this? Not just get away from it. Right. Mm. It sounds like that's kind of where you're at. You're just kind of lost of like, what, what, how do I get there? What, what do I need to do to get there? Especially because I'm hearing you're taking ownership. I wouldn't even talk to you if I didn't think you were taking ownership. I'd just tell you to fuck off. Um, no, but, I've been do. I've been working on this for about a year, trying to get through my emotions, get through my things. Um, you know, overall in general. On your own? You've been doing this on your own? Uh, in programs. What programs? You never heard the bulletproof? Husband? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. very clear. <laughs> I mean, look, 90% of the stuff that's in there, like I don't, I never learned before. Yeah. I, I'm just like, I was a clueless dude. Why didn't my father didn't teach me shit. And I just went through life and I just was, I don't know, abused, whatever, mentally, physically, whatever it was. And I'm just like, holy shit, what the, who the fuck am I? You yeah. know? Yeah. Did what I, I mean, yeah, I, I have nothing negative to say about any other programs at all. Right. So I'll, I'll never do that. Um, I, I know that a lot of guys start there and they end up with me because we, we go to a whole different level. So it, it may be something to consider. So, yeah, no, I've, 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 there's, there's things I do and don't like about it. Um, yeah. and the level of people, I'm not sure where I'm at with it, but it has helped. Um, yeah. it's just, it's me, it's on me to do more work. And that's the, been the problem. I did yeah. some work, things change a little bit. And then it just, I got bogged down in my own job and my own things. And like, the life and two kids and all this craziness like that just happened and i became the nanny without a job and all this stuff and like you know but just fucking she's you your testicles huh you lost your testicles basically yeah i mean i didn't yeah. have my testicles that much before but now i totally lost them and completely castrated yeah I mean, exactly. but like i supported her through growing through her like she used to make x and now she makes like fifty thousand dollars more because she had to go back to work but it's driving her crazy she's exhausted and i'm trying to figure out how to take back over I mean, she's ready for divorce. She wants to sign papers. I just don't have the money to even get a mediator. She's yeah. done. So. Yeah. Well, I, I think start with this exercise. Um, okay. You know, the I think a lot of times the work is because guys are too focused on one area of the five mm -hmm. dimensional man. They they get so focused on being a lover, being being married, where I take a whole different approach. We, we're holistic. So like our, everything you just talked about, the father, like, you know, the kids and the job and all that is exact. I tack it from that. That is the five dimensional man. You as a father, you as a leader, you as a lover, you as a man, your internal world, your external world, and you as a producer and all five of those come together. And you right. have to start with you as a man though, before you yeah. work on your marriage. I'm you trying to get through to me as a man. Like yep. I live in my emotions and I'm bogged down. I can't even see or think clearly. Yeah. In the last couple of weeks, I'm just breaking through with that finally and feeling better and stronger about leading and decisions and all that stuff and without any one needing to do anything for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, I, you know, uh, you, the, my link's right there. I'd love to chat with you, but anything, if anything, at least do the, uh, the vision 360 exercise. I think it'll, I think it'll help give you some clarity on where you want to go from here. Um, and I appreciate you opening up. I'm um, just looking through the comments here. That's right now. It's make sure all services affect the finance. Things that used to work weren't working. We got a little bit of Yeah. It's hard, man. Around the finances, is definitely hard. It's in jumps. It yeah. fucking sucks. No, it's an issue slow. I have to her. Yeah. I mean, this is where a lot of people just, it just comes back to, I think, um, if you really, really look at it, it's like how we function through this. And this is where I'm saying really, really be focusing on the gratitude, you know, being grateful for what you do have. And then being grateful to, uh, you know, obviously I, I'm, I don't, I don't evangelize or anything. I'm a Christian. And so I look at things from a God perspective and I'm like, I'm thankful to God for my natural gifts, my natural abilities, be thankful to the universe. I don't care whatever you're thankful to, but I think having something that you believe outside of yourself helps even more um, mm -hmm. where it's like, you, you, you realize that you're not in control of all this, that there's some other cosmic force that is, and, and you have to go, okay, 
I can either look at it through the lens of God is punishing me, or I can look at it through the lens of God is making me a man. And, and, and that I think has been the crux for me personally, because I, you know, my dad was uh, emotionally abusive. I lost him at 15 years old. He died of cancer. And, and I think I viewed a lot of the world through that. Every time something hard was happening, this was to prove that I suck as a man. And in reality, I feel like now it's, you know, 45 years old now. And it's like, I look at everything through the lens that God is actually showing me how much of a man I am. And every time a negative thing happens, it's for my growth. So I have this saying that I got from Dr. Ben Hardy, which is, this is not happening to me. It's happening for me. And by looking oh, at yeah. every situation of this is happening for me changes the game. Right? So always. Yeah. Well, always. I got to run. Um, hopefully this was impactful for you. It was a little bit of a different way of me doing it, but it was fun to get on coach a little bit of you guys. Um, the, the, uh, Vision 360 is there as well as a link to my calendar. We'd love to chat with some of you about what's next and uh, where are you going to go from here because you really need a plan. Um, just trying to wing it on your own or, you know, and hey, there's other things out there. Great. Um, I'm, I'm very confident that I can get a man to where he needs to be in 90 days. So that's what I do. Um, love to chat with you guys. Either way, have a good one. I'll see you next week.